a bill to change some of Minnesota's K-12 education policies, like requiring civics and personal finance, incorporating the histories and experiences of people of color and indigenous people into the curriculum, and making schools free from hate and discrimination is headed to the Senate floor. Joining me to talk about the education policy bill is the chair of the Senate Education Policy Committee, Senator Steve Swidzinski. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure, Shannon. Thank you for having me. So I have to begin with congratulations, because the first time you came on this program, you were a newly elected senator, former government teacher, who had this idea about making civics a graduation requirement for 11th or 12th graders. And if this bill passes, then beginning with the 2023-24 freshman class, they will have to take a civics course in order to graduate in their 11th or 12th grade year. Why is this important? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I taught American government for 33 years, and I just assumed it was required everywhere. And when I got elected to the Minnesota Senate and found out it um, wasn't required in a lot of schools, in fact, um, of my three school districts, only um, one requires it as an upper class person to graduate. And my bill um, th doesn't allow ninth graders, it's not allowed in ninth grade, it's an upper class class because I believe government shouldn't be taught in ninth grade, it should be taught in upper classes when they're signing up for selective service and they're paying their first gas taxes and they have their first jobs and they're paying income taxes and retirement plans and, and they have to start thinking about post-secondary options and all these things and that's when government should be required. And I just think it's, um, you know, the, the Article 13 of the Minnesota State Constitution begins with the wording, um, a, a Republican form form of government, civics, a Republican form of government dependent upon the intelligence of the people. It is the duty of the legislature, um, it's the only duty we have in the legislature, is to create a general and uniform system of public schools. So it's a constitutional duty that the Minnesota legislature try to create an um, a intelligent people to help the Republican form of government progress. So that's why I think it's important. Well, another change to the graduation requirements in this bill is that students must complete a uh, personal fin I'm sorry, excuse me, a personal finance course for credit during their senior year, which goes to taxes and everything else. The bill says that the course must include topics like household budgets, loans, debt, interest, mortgages, filing taxes, and the impact of student loan debt. So with your history of experience with this age cohort, how will this information help these kids as they start their adult lives? Well, the, the, the idea for that bill came from a constituent that was, we were talking, I had their kid in class, so how's you know, Jimmy doing in class or whatever, and, um, and she said a, a couple years ago now, she said um, he was off in college and he didn't know he was supposed to get renter's insurance at this apartment complex and the basement flooded and he lost all of his stuff in this flood. And if he had known about rent, and I sat there listening to her and I thought, oh my God, why aren't we requiring personal fines to do all those things you just said and I get that the push is coming from the school boards and the administrators we can't have more mandates upon our curriculum and I would ask you to talk to your communities talk to the talk to mom and dads and because they're gonna tell you they want civics and personal finance required of, of their of, of the schools and and um, and I know you're part of this but at the state fair the 12 questions last year um, getting rid of the Social Security tax came up at 74 percent yes um, a personal finance class and a civics class to graduate was 90 percent and so people want those two classes required uh, let's talk about ethnic studies because the bill would add ethnic studies as a core new core discipline it defines ethnic studies as quote the critical and interdisciplinary study of race ethnicity and indigeneity with a focus on the experiences and perspectives of people of color within and beyond the united states what does all of this mean for kids and parents? How might this new lens be incorporated? Yeah, we already have ethnic studies standards, and um, so what we've got to do a better job at is making sure they're taught. Because kids, we, um, it's just, it, uh, well, you know, 5% of our, 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 our 3% of our teachers are teachers of color. And, um, and, and, and so, and our students, when I first started teaching, 
you know, you like 80% were white kids, and that has changed. And we need more teachers of color in our classroom um, to reflect the changing of our, po of our, our, our country has changed. And to better reflect the world we live in, kids need to be exposed to all these alternative choices of all that list you just gave me and it's the right thing to do because we want us to be more welcoming and and think of the what it you know bring me your tired huddled mat i mean that we we we, we are a, a melting pot or what i prefer to call a salad bowl um and so we're just an uh, we're a nation of immigrants so let's start teaching it um in our schools there is a section in the bill about malicious and sadistic conduct, which is defined as creating a hostile learning environment. And it would require that school boards now adopt a written policy that applies to students, teachers, administrators, and school personnel. What impact will this have? What is this trying to get at? Yeah, you know, there's, um, oh man, there's a lot of kids are hurting right now, and there's a lot of bullying going on. And, um, and so whatever we can do to make our kids more comfortable coming to school so that's um, a loving, welcoming environment. Our, we want our teachers to, to, to teach and we want our kids to want to learn. And when our teachers are suffering and or our kids um, because of the um, uh, malicious and salicious, is that sadistic. S malicious and sadistic behavior, um, it's just let's, we can do better and let's put it in statute so that um, kids feel safe and want to have a fun day. PSEO, or post-secondary enrollment option, is a great way for some high school kids to start college early. When I was a teacher at Century College, I almost always had one or two PSEO students in my classes. This policy bill would make one change to the PSEO program by prohibiting a college from requiring a faith statement from potential students. Why make this change? Yeah, um, that's probably the most controversial part of the bill. Um, the most discussion, the clash, so to speak, between the Republicans and Democrats, I'd say 75% of it's been on that provision in the bill. And the reason we, we um, there's a couple of schools out there that are asking faith-based questions. And um, we just, we and myself included, um, feel that uh, it's not the proper place of the, of the schools, they can they can be non they can be sectarian, um, but I don't believe they should be allowed to ask um, non sectarian. Do I have these words right? Non sect. I know what you're trying yeah. to say. Um, not not faith based questions in order to attend. Correct. And once funding. they get there, they you know they the school has the right to be able to, um, to to promote their curriculum as they see fit. But to ask students, I think it's discriminatory, and um, to ask questions that faith-based question ahead of time. Uh, Senate and House Republicans recently held a press conference where they were promoting their literacy proposal. And I've heard multiple places now that currently 50% of Minnesota children are not reading at grade level. The Republicans are proposing that some of the surplus be used to invest in what's called the science of reading, teacher training, tutoring for students who are not at grade level. Does more funding need to be allocated to help these kids uh, improve their reading skills? Do schools need to adopt different curriculum? Does money need to go in that direction? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I think one of the things that you're going to see in the final analysis in the policy education bill and the finance education bill is a lot of money for um, reading. And, and we're we know that third graders aren't reading up to speed. We get it, and we've got all these programs and all these proposals, and we're throwing a, a lot of ideas out there, and let's figure this out. Um, one, I mean, that ranges from um, one of the bills that's in the policy bill is, um, or maybe it's in finance, uh, but that when kids go to the doctor, there's a book in their language waiting for them as they leave the doctor, and it's just a great idea. It doesn't cost a lot of money, but it encourages the parents reading to the kids and it starts like it's a one to two year old doctor visit thing and um and then just as it goes on and on and uh, we got to get these kids ready to read because if they're not reading then they're not loving school because they, they get frustrated so we got a lot of ideas out there on reading okay uh we'll leave it there senator steve swadzinski i want to thank you for your time thank you thank you thank you